Some people find reading boring. I mean, it is just text on paper. How could it be interesting, right? Well, I for one heavily disagree with that, but some do find an escape in comic books or graphic novels since they have visual aids, which arguably makes the experience more enjoyable. I personally take this a step further and like to listen to music while I read my comics. The question is, should I really be listening to music and reading text and looking at pictures all at once? Is it sensory overload? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to the show with issues. I'm Orem, you know, the guy you spammed the C Sneg comments, and I'm here on the NerdSeek channel because apparently I lost my way to my channel somehow. I Anyway, today our goal is to find the answer to this main question. Is it beneficial to listen to music while reading comic books? To start off, let's look at the results of a poll that we conducted on the NerdSync Twitter account. We posed the question, do you read comics with or without music, and provided three answer choices, with music, without music, and a little bit of both. 13% said that they read with music, 34% said they do a little bit of both, and a whopping 53% said that they read with no music. This surprises me, because personally, I read with music all the time. I just I just find that silence allows my mind to wander too much and the music keeps me focused. So over half of the 300 people that participated in this poll don't read comics with music. Why is this? A while back, when I originally did this episode over on my channel, I conducted the same survey on a couple of subreddits. Many people commented with their opinions on the matter, with some saying that they like to completely involve themselves in the comic and that anything else is a distraction, while others were in full support of having music on so long as it is either a provided playlist, fits the tone very well, or is just some kind of instrumental piece. This I actually heavily agree with. Whenever I listen to music while reading, it's always instrumental, most of the time film scores. The reason for this, personally, is I just find it less distracting and more atmospheric than music with lyrics. It sometimes can even set the mood of the comic, which loops back around to why some people only listen to music if there is a provided playlist or they know of a song or score that fits the tone of the comic perfectly. So right now, the answer seems to be that most people don't listen to music while reading, but those who do like instrumental pieces. Let's dive a little deeper with another poll that I found on goodreads.com. They asked 2,500 people a broader blanket question, is listening to music while reading distracting? And they provided five answers. It depends on the type of music, yes, kind of, I do it all the time, and no. 38% of people said that it depends, 31.6% said yes, 11% said kind of, 9.8% do it all the time, and 9.6% said no. So this is really just lending more towards that it depends on the type of music answer we got earlier, and lessens the flat out no, which is both good and bad. It's a blurrier and less definitive answer, but it actually gets us closer to figuring out the perfect recipe for our actual brain. I mentioned this briefly earlier, can our brains actually even take in all of this information at once? This is where all the science mumbo jumbo comes into play that you guys seem to love so much here on NerdSync. We've pretty much decided at this point that people will listen to comics with music as long as it's instrumental, otherwise they find it too distracting. But why is this? Let's start with a 2014 study conducted by Drs. Nick Parham and Harriet Curry. The experiment involved four groups of participants, one that read a passage with instrumental music, one that read a passage with lyrical music that the participant either liked or disliked liked, and the control, one that read with no music at all. After they read their passages, they would quickly take a questionnaire on the content of the passage, which allowed Param and Curry to see how each type of music affected their volunteers. What's interesting here is that the instrumental and control groups scored significantly higher than the lyrical groups on the test. What this means is that music with lyrics actually hinders our reading comprehension, but instrumental music or just plain ambiance seemingly doesn't affect us. This is because of the phonological loop, which is one of the main concepts that have a part in how our brains store memories. The phonological loop is in charge of handling auditory and vocal sounds, such as speaking or listening to lyrics and songs. This is what your brain is doing when you hear that sort of echo in your head as they're being said. It's processing the information and deciding whether to store it for later or just to throw it away. This is also the reason why instrumental music has less of an effect on us than lyrical music does. The phonological loop is able to more quickly process instrumental music because of its lack of verbal lyrics. Let's move on to a little more brain science with a proposition in Daniel Kahneman's book Thinking Fast and Slow. He explains that the brain is composed of two systems with the interactions between the two determining how we think and act. System 1 controls all the automatic and involuntary impulses like breathing or things that just become second nature. This stems from unconscious evolutionary survival instincts that were advantageous to our ancestors who needed to make rapid judgments and actions to avoid death, like a jump scare. System 2 controls all the conscious decisions and tasks that require an intense focus, like choosing what to say or trying to find Waldo. That sneaky little red and white menace. 
can't ever find him. Now don't get this confused with the left brain, right brain myth that's been floating around in pop culture for ages. That is simply not true. Yes, one hemisphere of our brains can handle certain tasks more dominantly than the other hemisphere, if this is called lateralization, but there is no evidence to suggest that creative people are more right brain dominant or that analytical people are more left brain dominant. Your brain uses both hemispheres in tandem for almost every task. So when we're talking about systems of the brain, it's important to not get that confused with literal physical regions of the brain. But what's important here is determining which system takes care of the different stimuli that present themselves while reading a comic book with music, the songs, the art, and the text on the page. The interesting thing here is that the individual stimulus will jump between the two systems depending on what task you're focusing on at the time. Ideally, you'll be using your focus from system one on the comic and just have the music on as kind of a background noise that doesn't really take your attention away from the story. But if the music is distracting while trying to read, you'll more easily forget what you just read. The art stimulus is more of a non-issue here, but for someone who is more artistically inclined, you could get lost in it and forget to actually read the words. And of course, there's the flip side of this argument, which I'm actually a bit guilty of myself, where you could get lost reading and not notice what's going on in the art at the time. Volume of the music could also be a factor. A study from the University of Illinois found that noise around 70 decibels helps you become more creatively cognizant. For comparison, that's about the level of an average shower, which coincidentally is why you tend to get those eureka moments when you're showering. But those good effects go away at about 85 dB, which I know on paper doesn't sound like that much of a difference from 70 dB, but it's actually over twice as loud. It's about the level of a blender or a snowblower, so obviously you don't want to be listening to music that loud while you're also trying to concentrate on another attention demanding task. The researchers found that at 85 dB, the noise becomes a distraction that actually inhibits your ability to process information. So, you know, probably don't blast music while you're reading, it's not helping, and the people in the apartment below you don't appreciate it either. John. So some of you might now be thinking that I have no idea what I'm talking about because you always listen to music while reading and it's never distracted you or lessen your reading comprehension because you're a great multitasker. Well, I'm here to jump on my high horse and tell you that multitasking is a big fat lie. In fact, it's impossible. Our brains simply can't handle completely focusing on more than one task at a time. When you think you're multitasking, your brain is actually just quickly switching between tasks as you call for them. Think of it as trying to watch two movies on the same monitor, but you have to keep quickly switching between them to understand what's going on. On. Once both movies are over, you're going to have a seeming lack of understanding of both. Sure, you'll be able to remember bits and pieces, but your comprehension went down drastically as opposed to if you had just been focusing on one movie. The reason for this is because your brain is being overloaded when trying to multitask. It has to save a certain amount of power for the first task, the second task, and the actual task of switching between the two. It's like the saying goes, you can be mediocre at a lot of things or you can master one. Now that I've thrown all this science and poll results at you, let's try and make sense of it all. Of those who read comics with music, most will likely choose a piece or playlist that is instrumental, seeing as lyrics can be a bit distracting. We know from the Param and Courier experiment that lyrics can in fact hinder comprehension and that instrumental music has no effect on us, but on the flip side, we know that multitasking is impossible and can potentially slow us down. So the big question, should you read comics with music? Scientifically, not unless it's instrumental, but that's up to you and your brain, really. The problem lies in whether or not you're going for comprehension and ease or just for the fun of it. Instrumental music has been proven to not have much effect on comprehension, but it also provides provides another stimulus that our brains could potentially latch onto and slow us down in our main goal finishing and understanding the comic book at hand. It generally makes the whole experience more enjoyable, and if you feel like you miss some things because of it, so what? Just take another look at the book. It's not like it's going anywhere. I would, however, advise against reading with lyrics flying around in your headphones. That just gets messy. So what do you all think? Do you read comics with music? If so, what type of music do you normally listen to? Let us know in the comments. Before I go, I guess I should clarify another reason why I'm here. I'm one of the video editors on the NerdSync team. So there's that. If you want to check out some more of my stuff, then go ahead and click this annotation right here and check out an episode of The Show With Issues, where I talk about a bunch of alternate universe versions of Deadpool. I hear he has a movie coming out or something soon? I don't know. Or you can always stick with the nerd sync goodness and check out the latest episode of Comic Misconceptions. And of course, be sure to hit that big shiny subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything us here at NerdSync cook up for you. That all being said, once again, I'm Orem, and I'm gonna go back to editing now. Bye bye